Meet Biako. Biako is my friend. What kind of friend is it? Well, it's a CPU air cooler. A CPU air cooler that goes into your case and makes everything nice and cool. What can it do? Well, we're gonna test it out and find out how well it's gonna do. We've obviously tortured testing a CPU, which is a 6700K and um, yeah, we wanna see what it can do. It's a smaller one and this is by Scythe. And uh, so far we've tested a few stuff, uh, CPU air coolers, and they've been really great. So, the only thing is, it works with AMD, yes. It works with Intel 1150, 1151 socket, 775 socket, and the 1366 socket. But it doesn't work with um, Intel 2011 version 1 and version 2 and version 3. So, this is more up to date with the Z170 motherboards and stuff like that, and the other AMD boards, like the A Plus and all that sort of stuff. So we're going to take a look and we're going to just bench test it and obviously unbox it, see how long it takes and then my conclusion afterwards. See you in a sec. Oh yeah, check out these beautiful cables. Custom to any colour you like. 8 pin, 6 pin, EPS connectors, 24 connectors. Oh yeah, Shagmars, shut your mouth. Check out their website. Before we get started, obviously we need to open the box and get everything out. So I'm gonna open up the box. Obviously the presentation on the box is really nice, straightforward. If you look and if you're buying this off the shelf, you know what to do. Now I'm just gonna get it out of the box. So you get a bracket. I don't even know what it's gonna be about yet. Thermal grease in a plastic bag, <laughs> okay. You get your instructions, let's have a look, see if they're quite clear. They are, they are very clear instructions, which I'm gonna use. And then, you get the CPU air cooler itself. And do you know what? This doesn't look like it's gonna be hard to build because it's already on there. So this is a slight, slightly cheaper uh, CPU air cooler. And uh, this is a 93 um, millimeter fan, but it should be perfect for what we need to do. We've got, what you normally get with a stock cooler, these little brackets that go into the actual motherboard itself. And uh, I don't know what this is for, we're gonna have to have a look. But yeah, that's all it comes with. So let's see how long this will take us to actually put this together and test it. So as you can see, the cable's not the most attractive cable at all, but we're just looking at performance and we're seeing how well this is gonna actually perform against all the bigger CPU air coolers that we've chosen so far. The CFM on here is going to be slightly lower than everything else. It looks like you can put another fan here. It doesn't come with another bracket, so you can uh, add another fan on there, which is a bit, a bit annoying. But um, the fins are very good quality. Looks like you get high uh, pass through with uh, airflow. Don't know how the uh, blades are. The blades are quite aggressive. And then you've got some easy brackets there, screws, and take this off. You've got a very small nickel plate back to add to uh, contact to the CPU. And this bit of grease as well. So what I'm gonna do is put the grease on, cut it, and then squirt it, and then use it as uh, something to like kind of uh, get enough paste on there, flatten it, even it out. So this grease looks quite decent though. It doesn't look very rubbish or anything like that. The thing is, I don't understand why it's in a bag. They could have put it in a tube. Anyway, let's get on with it and uh, see how we get on. So what I'm doing is I'm spreading over the thermal grease and uh, it's a bit tricky on here. All right, well I don't want too much, so I'm just gonna leave it like that. And I ain't gonna actually spread it with um, <laughs> the thermal grease in the bag. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the CPU air cooler to do that. This is actually an AMD bracket that goes on over the top. So I've got the clips ready for the Intel. So let's see, I'm gonna put it in there. It's nice and small actually. So no bracket to put on here. Seems very straightforward. Won't know until I get it on there. So you just push down and twist on these. Oh. Put this in 
into the CPU fan header. So that's the PMW obviously. And it's funky cable, fans coming out. I've got enough clearance to put RAM in there, no problem. This is a 1151 socket. This is a Gigabyte uh, H170HD3. I'll probably say it in all the videos. Uh, Ballistic Elite 3000 megahertz by Crucial. We've got an Antec 1000 watt uh, power supply. It's a HCP Platinum underneath there. We're using an OCZ 480 gig solid state hard drive. Got no graphics cards. We've got no fans blown over the VRMs. And nothing else is called in. This is just pure, raw, of CPU uh, torture testing, that's exactly what we're going to do. So now we're just going to boot the, the system up and uh, get the results. So now what we're going to do is just do the performance test of uh, the CPU torture. So we've got the top um, like flagship uh, CPU at the moment with a 51 socket, 6700K. Obviously there's new processors out, I'm going to get hold of them, test them as well. But um, at the moment, not overclocked, idle. If you haven't watched the videos before, it's uh, running at 4.4 gigahertz. Um, so there's no overclocking, no nothing, no graphics card, uh, just using um, HD 5300 by Intel, which is a graphics uh, card that's in, or onboard graphics that are inside the motherboard. Anyway, everything's all normal. So I've got the CPU um, up on the screen, which is a Windows uh, UI. And it's just showing it's at four gigahertz to 4.4. And it's showing it's, it's idle at the moment. So I'm to get rid of that. And then everything that you can see on CPU Z, so CPU is still clocked at four uh, gigahertz. Um, and your cache is all normal and the uh, main board is a Gigabyte H170 HD3. And uh, it's running Skylic processor as normal. And uh, yep, I'm using DDR4 and uh, yeah, everything's right there. Uh, frequency is at 3000 uh, megahertz. Um, I think it should be at 3000 megahertz, but anyway, it's clocked down to whatever it's done there. Uh, DRAM frequency, okay. SPD, nothing there. Graphics, nothing there really, because it's onboard graphics 530. And nothing on the bench, because I don't need to bench test it. Should we do a quick bench test? Let's do a quick uh, bench. CPU and then this is the CPU so you can see if it's a cherry picked one or not a cherry picked one But at least you can see on the screen it only takes a few seconds and then it's kind of benched it out But if you do it so many uh, certain times you can see it straight away So this process a single thread 2067 and multi um, CPU four cores or eight multi uh, threads so four normal cores and four virtual cores 8746 so needs to have done that, and uh, as you can see in a CPU ID uh, monitor, uh, temperatures of the cores are running at 25, 26, 25, 26, 25, 25 degrees. So it's saying that that's what that is idle. Outside it's like 30 degrees, maybe 29 degrees, and in here it feels about 23, 24, it does feel quite warm. But um, this is a raw test just for the CPU. And obviously, if it's warmer in here, it should affect the temperature a little bit. Obviously, if you're in a colder country or colder, um, like autumn, winter sort of thing, it will obviously be cooler. Not in Australia, though, because Australia's just hot all the time. <laughs> anyway, um, where are we? Fan rotations per minute is at 1,153 for a 92-inch fan. And uh, everything is just set to normal. So now I'm going to run Prime 95 and uh, show you what's going on at the moment quite quiet and let's start the stress test now so what this does it stress tests the cpu cpu only and the fan we're talking about how much the fan can dissipate heat uh, the decibels that the fan's going to be creating we want to obviously want to make sure that it's able to do video editing gaming and all that sort of stuff but not being annoying with actually the fan noise so let's start the the thing it's gone up but that's hardly even noticeable but it's all about running this test for five minutes and also seeing if it goes way over 70 degrees then we're not really going to be interested in it not way over 70 degrees like when it goes too hot and then it's too loud at the moment it's pushing 68 degrees 66 62 66 of all four cores and at the moment it's still quite quiet could ramp up again uh what we are at 
2,288 rotations per minute with the fan spinning around the 92 uh, millimetre fan. Uh, wattage, not too bad. So, let's see how we get on. Well, anyway, let me talk about the, how the results are going. So it's at 12.22, so I'm going to stop the test at 12.27. Um, um, so, aesthetically, it looks really nice. It looks like you can fit this in a very small case. Um, a medium sized case, a large case, yeah you could do that, it's very simple to put in you've got to have some really tight fingers to get your fingers in there but it won't really much of an issue, um, on the back there's no bracket or nothing like that so you don't really need to move the motherboard and you can just place it down there, you can add an extra 92mm fan uh, but you have to make sure you get the metal bracket that comes with it uh, quite easy to clip on together anyway and you can take it off and put say um, a notch or a fan on there um, obviously not the brown and the, the cream one, you want to get like a, a, a decent colour version. The cable, if you're like very creative and you want to braid the cable and you want to have something really small and you want to cut down on the price, as long as this does a good job from this review, then yes, I definitely recommend it. But you can braid the cable, it's a PMW uh, uh, system, so basically when uh, the fan starts to go uh, basically it's like a fan controller, so it won't just continuously be just going like at its full RPM speeds, it would actually be going down and up, it depends on what it wants to do. But yeah, um, if you're going to add in two fans, then get like a splitter and it goes into a single cable, then you can use it straight into the one fan header, especially in the micro ATX or mini ATX motherboard. Um, this fan's quite decent, it's not really loud at all. As you can hear, my voice is quite. I'm not speaking very loud or anything like that. The cable's long enough as well if the CPU header is up here. And it looks like there's plenty of room for the RAM as well. There's plenty of clearance. So my RAM will stop here. And I've still got a good finger width of it as well. It looks really nice. And uh, can't really say much more about it. The heat pipe structure looks uh, great quality. Doesn't look very cheap or anything like that. Still feels nice and cool. But obviously get another fan it might drop the degrees slightly lower so we're touching 71 70 70 and 69 uh, degrees over all four cores and I'm quite impressed with it at the moment it's been running for two minutes so far alright so now it's totally uh, the performance uh, torture test is finished and as you can see by the results, we're at 71 degrees, 69, 69, 68. Now how hot it is outside and how like this, this CPU fan is like kind of not very expensive. It's like very much in everyone's budget, very small. I would recommend it for um, small like cases, medium sized cases, large cases if you really want to, but it will look a bit awkward because it's really small. But if you don't really like the really big heart of a CPU air cooler in your system and you prefer AIOs or normal customer cooling, well, it's up to you, it's your own preference, but this could be used for anything. HDCPs, uh, PCs, definitely. Uh, gaming, definitely 100%. Video editing, definitely 100%. Because when you're starting to ramp up the CPU and it's using the memory in the CPU, the fan will go really loud and it kind of makes you lose a bit of concentration. Studio work, if you're doing music and stuff like that, and your uh, mix and mastering, definitely worth using. Um, definitely worth using in hot conditions, as it's hot today. And uh, yeah, I think it's a really good CPU air cooler. Definitely like gives it high marks, definitely high grade. It's running at 72 degrees and the maximum rotations per minute I saw was 2,311. And uh, yeah, for a 92 fat, to 92 uh, millimeter fan, um, I can't believe how actually quiet it is. And, and it's got one fan and it's doing all the job and everything like that. And yeah, this is really quite cool. So now I'm gonna stop the stress test and obviously listen in on your uh, headphone set or whatever you're listening to and have a listen to the fan as I sh like shut it down. That, that is sick. That took like two seconds to actually shut down and it's running idle at 32, 34, 31, 31 and it's getting cooler and cooler as we speak. But that is like super quiet. Rotations per minute on the fans um, is like 10.49, 10.53. That's hardly anything. That is so cool. So 
You may not need to get a really big CPU air cooler, you can just use this one. It's actually smaller, really easy, don't need to put a bracket on or anything like that. Thermal grease is quite decent, obviously, getting decent temps and stuff, and really well made, made to last, looks good. Definitely go and buy it. Anyway, if you thought this video was, oh, if you thought this video was great, Give it a thumbs up, but if you didn't, you know what to do. I'll leave a link in the description down below where you can find this CPU air cooler, which is the Biaco by Scythe. Comment down below and hit me up and then I'll get back to you. It's always good to chat about certain things I may have missed or certain things you may have found, but so far, raw test, I'm really happy and I would definitely 100% recommend it. Don't forget to subscribe and um, yeah, keep up to date, because if you don't subscribe, you're not gonna know what's going on. Anyway. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Adios, amigos.